I'm Stephen Wiltshire. I do drawings. Stephen is an artist who creates incredibly intricate drawings of cityscapes. I love drawing tall buildings, tall skyscrapers, skylines, street scenes. And he does this entirely from memory. When Stephen was three, he was diagnosed as autistic. He was completely mute and lived entirely in his own world. Early on, Stephen's teachers noticed he loved to draw. He had found his way to connect with others. Stephen has the ability to look at a subject once and then draw an accurate and detailed picture of it, including panoramas of entire cities based off just a quick look. I go up on a helicopter and then memorize it and then after being on a helicopter and then straight back at the hotel and then start to do draw. His incredible talent launched an artistic career that has taken him around the world. Los Angeles, Dubai, Houston, Texas, and Tokyo in Japan. And that's just to name a few. New York's my favorite, Empire State Building, Chrysler Building, and there are lots of uh, yellow New York taxi cabs. And Stephen has no plans of stopping anytime soon. Someone told me that people like me drawings. I uh, feel good. Always be happy about it. The idea came from my father. He told me that there are pictures on the walls and the subway stations of old buildings, you know, old New York. 20 years later, after going through everything, school, college, and all that stuff, I thought I would finally give it a look and just see what my father was talking about. It was going to be a short article. I was going to illustrate some stations with some pictures and tell the stories. But it kind of ran away with me. What I set out to do is make a record of the appearance of the subway stations in New York City. I take drawings of the uh, mosaic or faience designs on the walls which embellish the stations. I devote as much of my time as I can to doing it. Uh, evenings, uh, weekends, vacation time even. You know, it's all, it's a sort of a consuming um, project. So far, I've completed four volumes, volume one, two, three, and four. My ambition is to take care of all the lines until all 490, 496 or 469, 470 stations have been recorded and seen. Why am I doing it? <laughs> okay. My purpose in doing this study is to make a record of what we've got. I want to like document uh, when it was done and who did it. So that's what I want to do. That's my focus, is to give credit to those who made it possible. I really started in earnest in 1978. And I thought I'd get this uh, project finished and wrapped up by the year 2030, which is only 14 years from now. Perhaps I have had to re-estimate um, re and um, suggest maybe close to 2040. I'll be in my 90s then. Hope I can still see. <laughs> the pleasure of doing the job is um, is payment. I'm committed to it, that's all. It's my, pur it's my purpose, it's my life. It's become my identity. So I have to live up to it. These paintings, they aren't done with acrylic, oil, or watercolor. Microsoft Excel. 
The Computer Program. This is a story about Tatsuo, the Microsoft Excel artist. I am Horiuchi Tatsuo. I am 77 years old. When Tatsuo retired, he decided he wanted to paint. But there was one problem. He was cheap. He didn't even want to pay for an art program. So he used what was already on his computer. So you know, Kitchener, Kangai Karane, to Excel Gaina, to Yasui Printa, then, but I get the Kyosu. So, how do you paint in Excel? The line tool, it's usually used for spreadsheet graphs. That you can make trees with. And the bucket tool, it helps with subtle shading on, for example, the crest of a volcano. The Sui Koto and the Girunda, you know, ma, so that. ね、絵心なんかなくたって、I just want to start and go and go and go. The longest amount of time that I can draw before the tide comes in and washes everything away. My name is Jim Denovan. I draw in the sand. To draw in the sand, it's a balance between a mental game and a physical. They're both equally important. I started drawing in the sand. A little more than 20 years ago, I was walking along the beach one day. It just came to me to use it as a canvas. I just put my finger in the sand and made a giant fish. I became really, really obsessed with it. I left behind the world both of surfing and the job as a chef, and then I just put everything into drawing in the sand. There was almost no one in the whole world that, that did this kind of thing. I've drawn in sand around the world. Australia, Uruguay, Argentina, Chile, Russia. I mean, occasionally a commission, but I'm also in places where, oh, there's a nice patch of sand. I think I'll go do something there. The one that was 10 miles in circumference in the desert on a dry lake, it's a Guinness World Record and largest art. I've walked as much as 30 miles in one day, which means about seven or eight hours of walking. I like the stick probably the best because I like to come down to the beach with nothing. The tools are sitting there on the beach, sticks to choose from, and I'll do my composition, do a nice big drawing, and then I'll throw the stick away. Come down with nothing and leave with nothing. For me, that's the most fulfilling choice of how to do it. Drawing the sand is the ultimate of in the moment, and I want to finish when the tide is about to destroy the drawing. This is going to change every day. Anything I do down there is going to be gone, and every time I'm going to have a big, huge place to try something new. Making drawings on land on quite a large scale is something people have been doing for thousands of years. I'm Simon Beck and I make drawings in the snow.
It started as a bit of fun, but gradually it's taken over my life. A ballpark estimate of footsteps, about 5,000 steps in an hour. A big drawing, two hours measuring, eight hours work. You're looking at 40,000 steps. I started doing it as an easier alternative to hiking up the mountain when I wanted some exercise. You're starting with a, a drawing on a piece of paper, or else a drawing in your mind. Just treating it a bit like an orienteering map. You're just going a certain distance in a certain direction, determining distances by counting paces. It's a very physical exercise. It's equivalent to a long day's walking in the hills when you make one of these big drawings. I'm just about the only person in the world doing anything like it.